Can Review Print Speaking to the Blind, celebrating 40 years of audio newspaper production. Welcome to this week's edition of the Duck and Hill Herald Podcast, recorded at the Bishop Wright's Media Centre by our amazing volunteers. You can get in touch with us via Facebook, Twitter or Instagram using at Tune Review. That is at symbol C-U-E-A-N-E-R-E-V-I-E-W. You can also contact us directly by emailing information at tunereview.com. That is I-N-F-O-R-M-A-T-I-O-N at symbol C-U-E-A-N-E-R-E-V-I-E-W dot C-O-M or by calling 0141-772-3976 That's 0141-772-3976 This week's Kirk and Tillich and Bishop Briggs Herald Wednesday the 22nd of February 2023 is read to you by volunteers Alan, Corey, Hunter and Ian Academy recognised for Holocaust teaching Bishop Briggs Academy is one of 11 schools across Scotland which has been recognised for its good practice in Holocaust education at an event in the Scottish Parliament on February the 11th. The Academy has also become one of the first schools to renew its Vision Schools Scotland status, highlighting its commitment to good practice in teaching and learning about the Holocaust. The initiative is delivered by Vision School Scotland, a partnership launched in 2017 by University of the West of Scotland, UWS, and the Holocaust Education Trust, which is funded by the Scottish Government and the UK Department for Leveling Up, Housing and Communities. A vision school is one committed to the view that learning about the Holocaust is a vital part of young people's education. To receive the award, schools must demonstrate their existing commitment to the importance of Holocaust education and to develop teacher knowledge to ensure continued expertise in this subject matter. The programme embeds responsible citizenship at its core, a key principle of Scotland's curriculum for excellence, as it encourages effective and sustained school-based Holocaust education. The celebratory, celebratory event held at the Scottish Parliament was hosted by Jackie Bailey, MSP, and Jackson Carlaw, MSP. Ms Bailey said, I would like to pass on my warmest congratulations to the all-new Vision School for their outstanding work in Holocaust education. Vision School Scotland is a brilliant initiative that educates future generations about the horrors of the Holocaust in order to ensure that it never happens again. The programme has gone from strength to strength over the years and plays an important role in school-based Holocaust education. I would encourage all schools to sign up for the programme to get involved in this important work. Mr Carlaw added, Vision School Scotland is a wonderful education initiative and it has enriched the knowledge of young people across the nation on why we must never forget the lessons of the Holocaust. For more information, visit uws.ac.uk forward slash Visions School Scotland forward slash. That's uws dot ac dot uk forward slash visions school scotland forward slash a delve into the area's rich history folk in eastern Bartonshire are being invited to take a walk down memory lane as history is brought to life through a series of thought-provoking events to celebrate local history month the program organized by eastern Bartonshire leisure and culture trust in partnership with Eastern Barnetshire's Heritage and History Groups, will run from Wednesday, March the 1st until Thursday, March 31st. Exhibitions and activities celebrating Eastern Barnetshire's rich history, including walks, talks, art shows and discussions, have been organised at venues across the area. Find out more about the dramatic events of World War II when a local town was bombed in a talk entitled the day the war came to Bishop Briggs. Little historians can get their hands dirty at the Family Dig event at Gavin's Mill in Mogai, while adults can find out more about the local geology and the area's mining past in a presentation organised by Torrance and Baldernock Heritage and History Group. 
learn more about the fascinating lives of local heroes Beatrice Clugston or Thomas Muir at one of many scheduled talks taking place. Alternatively, let your own creative juices flow during a history and creative writing session with writer and researcher Flora Johnston at Kirk and Tillich's William Patrick Library. For the more energetic, guided walks are taking place across Eastern Bartonshire, including a canal heritage walk from Townhead Canal Bridge in Kirk and Tillich, led by Canal News editor Paul Cartner, Carter, which will delve into the stories behind this important waterway. Jim Neal, chair of EDLC Trust, said, We are delighted to announce this year's programme, which offers a great opportunity to find out more about this area's rich and fascinating history. This annual event is a great way for groups to highlight their local history, and I would urge everyone to get involved and find an event which appeals to them. The full Local History Month 2023 programme is now available, detailing activities and events across Eastern Bartonshire throughout the month. Look out for details in libraries and other cultural venues and on the EDLC website www.edlc.co.uk forward slash heritage dash arts forward slash what's dash on. That's www.edlc.co.uk forward slash heritage dash arts forward slash what's dash on. From the Kirk and Tillich Herald, Wednesday the 22nd of February, This Week in History, read to you by me, Ian. February the 22nd, 1886, The Times becomes the first newspaper to institute a classified personal column. On this day last year, a new study warned that hedgehog populations had plummeted across the countryside since the turn of the century. February the 23rd, 1953, an amnesty offered by the government to Second World War deserters brought in applications for more than 3,000 servicemen and 14 servicewomen. February the 24th, 1938, a nylon toothbrush, the first commercial nylon product, went on sale in New Jersey. On this day last year, IKEA opened its first city centre store in the UK, in London's Hammersmith. February the 25th, 1922, French mass murderer Henry Bluebeard Landru was guillotined for the murder of 10 women and a teenage boy whose bodies were never found. February the 26th, 1936, the Volkswagen car factory was opened in Saxony by Adolf Hitler. On this day last year, Long-running US cartoon The Simpsons shared a specially commissioned cartoon in solidarity with Ukraine. February 27th, 1939. Britain's most haunted house, Borley Rectory, was destroyed by fire. On this day last year, Forsey's sweetheart Dame Vera Lynn was being celebrated with the launch of £2 coins designed by the Royal Mint. MSP pays visit to new home site. West Scotland MSP Pam Gossel visited Persimmons Kelvin Gate development in Kirkintilloch and met with workers and apprentices to hear about the home builders' investment in eastern Bartonshire and across West Scotland. Kelvin Gate features 84 energy efficient new homes, ranging from one to four bedrooms, 17 of which are being transferred to Sanctuary Housing Association. The new homes were built on a derelict brownfield site beside the old headquarters of Eastern Bartonshire Council, transforming the area from an eyesore into a modern, accessible and affordable development. As well as being within a 10 minute walk of the town centre, local school and sports centre, the site is designed to encourage active travel and includes a section of cycleway that connects to the National Walking and Cycling Network. Ms Gosel, Shadow Minister for Higher and Further Education, Youth Employment and Training, was given a tour of the site and met with the local Persimmon team to discuss the the opportunities and challenges facing the housing sector, as well as the Home Builder's successful apprenticeship programme. Chris Logan, Persimmon West Scotland Managing Director, said, 
it was great to welcome Pam to our Kelvin Gate development to show her the new homes and investment that has regenerated a key gateway into Kirkintilloch. The development is not only delivering much needed housing, it embodies the 20 minute neighbourhood principle with fantastic connections to the town centre, local facilities and public transport. With the average price of a persimmon home 16% below the average price of a new build in Scotland, we're proud to be opening the door to home ownership for more families in eastern Bartonshire and across West Scotland. Pam Gozel, MSP, said, I am delighted to see Persimmon's Kelvin Gate development near completion. The site has supported apprentices to gain vital hands-on experience. The affordable homes which have been built on this site are important in rejuvenating the area and giving many an opportunity to get on the property ladder. Read by Alan Todd MSP praises work of local volunteers at event. Strathkelvin and Bearsden MSP Ronan Mackay praised the work of local volunteers, charities and social enterprises at a special community event at Bishop Briggs recently. The Be Kind Community Volunteer Day organised by Better Briggs Group, was held at Bishop Briggs Community Church. SMP MSP Ms Mackay said, I was delighted to meet up with some of the amazing local groups and volunteers who give so much to the community to help improve the lives of local people. Special thanks also to Asda for the cakes and local social enterprise Glasgow Roasters for the delicious coffee. Groups who took part in the event included local history group Friends of Thomas Muir, Asda Community Champions, Grace Recovery Aftercare Support for Group for People Who Have Experienced Life Traumas, and Bishop Price Community Council. Meanwhile, Ms Mackay has congratulated three organisations in Eastern Barnshire who have benefited to the tune of almost £93,000 in grant aid from the National Lottery Community Fund. In the most recent round of awards, Deafblind Scotland, whose HQ is in the area, received £73,654 to go towards its Touching Lives project, where volunteer trainers who are themselves dual sensory impaired deliver awareness raising sensations to local community organisations. Antonine Theatre Group at Bishop Briggs can now set up a community cafe at its premises thanks to a £10,000 grant, and Twicker Allotment Gardens Association can now create a community space and wildlife areas thanks to a £9,000 award. Commenting on the awards, Ms Mackay said, It's great news that these three fantastic organisations have secured funding. I would like to thank all who give their time, energy and experience to support these groups, which enhance the lives of my constituents in Strathkelvin and Bearsden and beyond. Tribute paid to Sturgeon on resignation news. Local politicians have been quick to react to the news that First Minister Nicola Sturgeon is to stand down from the post as soon as a successor is found. Scottish Labour MSP Katie Clark said, I paid tribute to Nicola Sturgeon for her dedicated public service as First Minister over the last eight years, particularly as she led Scotland through the challenging time of the COVID-19 pandemic. She was both the longest serving First Minister and also the first woman to hold the post. While I have disagreed with many of the decisions that she has taken, I also recognise that serving as a frontline politician for more than 20 years has a very heavy toll on an individual and their family. I hope this resignation will enable the Scottish Government to refocus on the issues which matter most to the Scottish people, dealing with the crisis in our NHS, prioritising education in our schools and the skills, skills agenda, tackling poverty, the cost of living crisis and the significant economic challenges which Scotland face. Neil Bibby, MSP, said, Regardless of my political differences with her, I recognise her service in government for many years, including through the COVID-19 pandemic, and I respect everything she has said about the personal toll in her time in office has had on her and her family. It is clear that Scotland needs new ideas, a new passion to make her country the best place to grow, grow up and grow old in. Labour will aspire to win the confidence of the public and to be the change that Scotland needs. West Scotland MSP Pam Gosell said, Throughout her time in office, she has failed to focus the Scottish people's true priorities and she leaves behind a Scotland that is far more divided than when she became First Minister. I hope that Nicola Sturgeon's resignation marks a turning point in Scottish politics 
one where the SNP government finally moves on from the divisions of the past and starts working together with a UK government to put Scotland's true priorities first. Limited Spaces Only Report by Neil McGrory An Eastern Bartonshire wide notice to shoppers has been flagged up in regard to parking following the year-long closure of a supermarket. The authority has stated that limited parking spaces will remain available at Morrison's and Bishop Briggs while the store undergoes this extensive revamp. The supermarket chain has confirmed that a total of 35 spaces will be open for customers who are not buying fuel at the temporary Morrison's Daily Store. It is stressed that this, this smaller premises will remain operational while the main supermarket branch goes through its major overhaul. The next closest Morrison supermarket branch is a quarter of an hour drive away in Easter House. Thomas McPherson, manager of the Morrison's Bishop Briggs, said, We know that residents are eagerly anticipating the opening of our new store. We are working hard to mitigate the inconvenience while it is being built. EDC stated its own nearby car park would remain open to allow motorists to access the town centre, as there were always limitations to what was being provided by the supermarket chain. The council's deputy chief executive, Anne Davy, commented, The Morrison's car park is not a public car park. Morrison's has never been under any obligation to provide parking for the wider town centre. The council-owned chargeable car park at nearby Kemmuir Drive has a capacity for 65 vehicles. This remains open and available for town centre use. As part of the city deal down town centre regeneration project, we are looking at the connections and crossings in the town centre and ways to improve these. This will include the route to Kemmuir Drive car park, making it even easier for people to park there and access the town centre. Morrison's was given the go-ahead to replace the existing store, which was built in the 1980s, at EDC's planning board in December. The company owns more land at the South Council Road site than it currently occupies and it proposed to develop a bigger store, plus a petrol station. The new store will include a cafe, a pharmacy and an ATM. Funeral costs covered. A total of 170 funeral support payments totalling more than £300,000 have been made in Eastern Bartonshire to help pay towards the costs of a funeral, according to the latest official statistics. The Scottish Government's funeral support payment is available to people who get universal credit, tax credits and certain benefits and are responsible for paying for the funeral. The average payment in the 2022-23 financial year was £1,835 and the payment can be used towards burial or cremation costs and other expenses like funeral director's fees, a coffin or flowers. People who have applied for the benefit can ask for the payment to be paid directly to funeral directors, with 64% of applicants choosing to do so. People can apply for support up to six months after the date of the funeral itself. Those eligible for the funeral support payment must be living in Scotland, be financially responsible for the funeral and be on a qualifying benefit or tax credit. A sign of the times as recorded by Hunter MacDonald. Staff at Specsavers Kirk and Tiller stores have completed British Sign Language BSL training. Colleagues at 30 Specsavers stores across the country have undertaken training to ensure they're able to communicate with any customers who use BSL Sign Language. Natalie Kennedy and Ryan Turner from the Kirk and Tiller store completed the training. Neil Drain, optometrist director at the store, said, Looking after our customers and making them feel comfortable is our main priority. This new training will equip our staff with the knowledge to better support and communicate with customers who have hearing loss and use BSL. Our teams are always looking for opportunities to undertake additional training to ensure we better understand the needs of our customers. This training follows many of our staff across Scotland undertaking Dementia Friends training to ensure customers with dementia feel safe and are looked after in a sensitive way. Rebecca McKinstry, Royal National Institute for the Deaf, Communications Manager says, We are really pleased that Specsaver staff in Eastern Berkshire have completed BSL training 
to make the stores more accessible to Dave customers. Learning a bit of BSL makes a big difference in making customers feel welcome and we encourage all businesses to consider learning BSL from a qualified teacher and undertaking deaf awareness training to make their business as inclusive as possible. Glasgow Clyde College, which delivered the bespoke course, were delighted to work the spec savers. Lorna McIntyre, BSL lecturer at Glasgow Clyde College, praised the enthusiasm and ability of the spec savers team. She added, our deaf teachers offer not just engaging British Sign Language lessons, they also provide the most valuable cultural and linguistic perspective as first language BSL users. It was a pleasure working with staff from Kirkintilla as part of their introduction to BSL. The lectures received some really positive feedback following the completion of their course. Redeem Vouchers, says MSP. Local MSP Rona Mackay is urging residents in her constituency on prepayment gas and electricity meters to redeem their energy rebate vouchers before it is too late. Latest figures from Advice Direct Scotland charity reveal one in five households with prepayment meters have not cashed in their vouchers issued to help pay bills. Most households will have £400 automatically taken off their electricity bills in six instalments or will have the money added to their accounts. Miss Mackay said it's shocking that some of my most vulnerable constituents may be affected. Don't miss out on this cash aid during this cost of living crisis. Check any unopened mail in case the vouchers have been missed and check with your energy suppliers using contact details found on bills, statements and official websites. Contact energyadvice.scot if there are any difficulties getting through to suppliers or resolving issues. The team can be contacted on 0808-196-8660. Celebrating 70 years of service to the community, the Rotary Club of Kirkintill celebrated a very special milestone recently, 70 years of service to the local community. The club was founded on February 2nd, 1953, and on February 3rd this year, members gathered to celebrate the occasion with a commemorative dinner. Guests included Provost Gillian Rennick of Eastern Bartonshire, Reverend Mark Johnson of Glasgow Cathedral and District Governor Gail Savage, along with many other fellow Rotarians, family and friends. Club members had gathered together memorabilia which was on display, including the programmes from the club's inaugural dinner at its 21st, 40th and 50th dinners. Provost Rennick welcomed guests with a speech recalling the club's very first president, Reverend Tom Houghton of St Mary's Church in Kirkintilloch. President Deborah Carmichael spoke of the work of the club, which has since, launch, since its launch has reached out from Kirkintilloch to give shelter, comfort, health, well-being and hope to those in direst need. She spoke of the pleasure it was to remember and honour the many who had been part of that long history, and she expressed the commitment of all the current members to carry on that work in the decades to come. The club's sergeant at arms, Bob Thomason, steered members to the rest of the evening. District Governor Gail Savage brought a letter, brought a letter from President Jennifer Jones, congratulating the club on its 70 years, and presented a district grant in support of Ukrainian refugees. Past President Morag McLeod surprised the club secretary Donny Campbell with a presentation of a Paul, Her- Paul Harris Fellowship as a mark of esteem for all the work he has done through the years of COVID and beyond to keep members in contact via Zoom and to support and maintain the work of the club. Thereafter, Kevin O'Sullivan played a number of melodies on the violin before the main speaker of the evening, Reverend Mark Johnson of Glasgow Cathedral, entertained with anecdotes and tales before raising a toast in honour of the Rotary Club. Regulations on the way for buy now, pay later firms. New regulations for buy now, pay later consumers are set to help protect an estimated 10 million customers from unconstrained borrowing, while still ensuring those who need it have access to interest-free credit. With more people taking out these credit agreements and the potential risk of consumers being exposed to financial harm, the government is setting out proposed new regulations. It will mean buy now, pay later credit products are set to be regulated by the FCA and consumers will have the new right 
to take complaints to the Financial Ombudsman Service. Under new rules, providers will have to give consumers key information about their loans and issue credit that is genuinely affordable. Economic Secretary to the Treasury, Andrew Griffith, said, People should be able to access affordable credit, but with clear protections in place. That is why these proposed regulations are so important. Today's summit will also help regulators and banks better understand the best ways to support people who feel boxed in by debt and open up the financial system to people who find it more difficult to access. Buy now, pay later can be a quick, easy and helpful way for people to manage their finances, allowing them to spread the cost of a full purchase over time without paying interest. However, because many of the agreements aren't currently regulated and rely on minimal credit checks, lenders are not required to give key information to borrowers and some people may end up borrowing more than they can afford to repay. On February 2nd, 2021, the government announced its intention to regulate interest-free Buy Now, Pay Later, BNPL, products. The government consulted on policy options to deliver a proportionate approach in October 2021 followed by a consultation response in June 2022. It is now consulting on the proposed draft legislation that will bring BNPL into Financial Conduct Authority regulation. Closing at 11.59pm on April 11th, to have your say in the consultation, visit www.gov.uk forward slash government forward slash consultations forward slash regulation dash of dash by dash now dash pay dash later dash consultation dash on dash draft legislation legislation that's www.gov.uk forward slash government forward slash consultations forward slash regulation dash of dash buy, dash now, dash pay, dash later, dash consultation, dash on, dash draft, dash legislation. Super Scarf Mission Scab and Dude has been wrapping women with its super scarves since they launched in 2022. Every time someone buys a scarf, the firm donates another to a woman with cancer. Last year it reached an incredible milestone of donating over 10,000 super scarves. The mission for 2023 is to donate a super scarf to every woman starting chemotherapy in the UK, which sadly stands at around 60,000. Founder Joe Tuchiner Sharp said, I designed these scarves with the aim of wrapping women with cancer in a super power infused hug. To know we have managed to help over 10,000 women so far is just amazing. My aim is to be able to donate a scarf to every woman being treated for cancer across the UK this year. New styles are launched every month. If you'd like to help, visit https colon forward slash scabanddude.com Accidents can occur in the blink of an eye. A campaign has been launched by Road Safety Scotland and the Scottish Government reminding drivers about the dangers of fatigue. Fatigue is a contributory factor in collisions which kill or seriously injure around 50 people every year in Scotland. Many of the countermeasures used by drivers to combat combat tiredness, opening a window, turning up the radio or pinching themselves, have been shown to be ineffective. Instead, the campaign urges drivers to take regular breaks, to stop to rest and have a coffee and plan ahead to avoid driving tired. Minister for Transport Jenny Ruth said, Driver fatigue is a serious issue that causes too many serious and fatal road collisions each year. Drivers often experience early signs of feeling tired such as yawning, eyes drooping and head nodding and should stop for a rest as soon as it is safe to do so. We're reminding people to plan their journeys well in advance, ensure they're well rested before setting out and take regular breaks. It's It's simple yet powerful advice which can help save lives in Scotland's roads. Sleep-related collisions are around 50% more likely to result in death or serious injury 
as they tend to be high speed impacts. Michael McDonnell, Road Safety Scotland director, said, A tired driver is a danger, not only to themselves but to everyone on the road. If you feel tired while behind the wheel, opening your window or turning up the music isn't enough. Stop for a rest and a coffee before you get back to the road to help keep you and others safe. A two second micro sleep at 30 miles per hour can result in a complete transition from one lane to the next and you will be unable to notice or react to a child stepping out into the road. The new multimedia marketing campaign will run in multiple channels including TV, digital, outdoor, radio, PR and social media. Thought provoking, it features a stri- striking close up of a tire driver's eye with the road ahead reflected in it. After a long blink, the road reappears in the eye. However, the car drifts towards the centre of the road as the eye droops further and finally remains closed, resulting in a head-on collision with another car and devastating consequences. The ad is available to watch on YouTube. A pilot scheme. The Scottish Government has launched its £900,000 mobility and scrappage fund offering cash incentives and travel better vouchers for households removing more polluting cars from the road. It has been piloted in lower income and air quality management areas. Delivered by Energy Saving Trust, it will provide a cash grant of £2,000 in return for the safe disposal of more polluting vehicles. In addition, the fund will offer up to two £500 travel better grants to purchase a range of sustainable travel options including bike, e-bike or public transport vouchers, encouraging a shift away from cars for those that choose to do so. It will benefit over 300 homes. To find out if your postcode is eligible, visit https colon forward slash energysavingtrust.org.uk Family Announcements Deaths Borland Matthew Suddenly at home on February 11th, 2023, Matthew, beloved son of William and Betty, loving brother of Richard, and a much-loved nephew and cousin. Committal service to take place at Daldowie Crematorium Broom House on February 28th, 2023 at 12 noon, followed by a Thanksgiving service at Kirkintilloch Baptist Church at 1pm. Family flowers only, please. There will be a retiral collection in favour of Tear Fund and donations will be gratefully received. It was Matthew's wish that bright colours should be worn. In Memoriam Scott Alex 25th of February 2003 Your memory, Dad and Papa, is as dear today, as in the hour you passed away. Love always, Claire, Colette, Gary, Gemma, and James. Environmentalists call for no more DRS delays. Environmental campaigners have said that Scotland's deposit return scheme should be delivered without any more unnecessary delay. After five years of planning, Scotland's deposit return scheme is due to launch on August 16th. With pleas for more clarity from the industry-led scheme administrator, Circularity Scotland, there have been calls to delay the Scottish plans. The deposit return scheme will work by people paying a 20p deposit when they buy a drink in a single-use container made of plastic, metal or glass. When the containers are returned, it provides a guaranteed source of materials for recycling. It will also make sure producers take full financial and environmental responsibility for the proper collection of their packaging. The Scottish Government has engaged with businesses of all sizes throughout the development of the scheme. Kim Pratt, Circular Economy Campaigner at Friends of the Air Scotland, said, Scotland's deposit return scheme must start in August. Businesses in Scotland have had five years to prepare for DRS, and many of them will already be familiar with how these schemes operate in other countries. It's time for Circularity Scotland, the industry-led scheme administrator, to deliver the planned DRS to the people of Scotland without delay, While it is encouraging that the UK government is committed to its own scheme, it should not be seeking to slow down environmental progress in the devolved nations. Politicians should be seizing this opportunity to take urgent action to combat waste 
a move to a more circular economy. Suggestions that the DRS will cost consumers are ir irresponsible. Like existing deposit return schemes in other countries, it will be simple for customers to, came back to claim back their 20p deposit back from the shop participating in the scheme. Dr. Kat Jones, director of APRS, has been running the Have You Got the Bottle campaign since 2014. She said, We have seen the support among the Scottish public for deposit return since the outset of the campaign. This scheme works well in other countries, where it is just the litter we see in our towns and countryside, cuts carbon emissions and results in savings for local authorities. However, the scheme has been delayed twice in response to industry foot dragging. We are all trying to do our bit to reduce waste, but the onus should be in the large companies creating the issue. Deposit return schemes work to shift responsibility for waste back to the com companies creating it. We need industry to work with the Scottish Government in order to create a scheme that works for businesses, communities and the environment. Catherine Gemmell, Scotland Conservation Officer for the Marine Conservation Society, added, Scotland Seas cannot and should not be paying the price for our waste. Our volunteers have been picking up cans and bottles for decades on beaches, but we need to put a stop to them getting there in the first place. Deposit return schemes have a huge potential to turn the tide. Circularity Scotland needs to implement the scheme in August for the benefit of both people and the planet. Kirkintilla Herald Letters page, Wednesday the 22nd of February 2023. Let's talk. Please send your letters via email to kirkyherald at jnscotland.co.uk and write letters in the subject field. Why will there be no coronation in Scotland? Sir, in 1603, James VI inherited the English throne on the death of Elizabeth I. The crowns of Scotland and England were joined, but the two countries remain separate and do so to this day. The monarch must be crowned in both. So, why will the coronation of Charles III only take place in England? Up until the failed English invasion of 1296, when Edward I stole the, st the Stone of Scone, Scottish monarchs were crowned on this ancient piece of sandstone, also known as the Stone of Destiny. This famous stone was kept at Westminster Abbey until Christmas Day 1953, when it was repatriated by four Glasgow University students, Ian Hamilton, Kate Math Matheson, Gavin Vernon and Alan Stewart. England took it back when it was recovered and the people of Scotland threatened an uprising if the four were punished. In November 1996, the stone was sent to Edinburgh on loan. At Westminster on May the 6th, Charles III will be crowned on it, as was his mother. Calling herself Elizabeth II when there had been no Elizabeth I in Scotland, Charles' mother spent a week in Scotland in 1953. The coronation at Westminster had been a ceremony full of pomp and ceremony, but she was crowned in Scotland wearing a blue shopping dress and carrying a handbag. Since the Union of Scotland and England, the coronation in Scotland has been reduced to what is called the Honours of Scotland, which can only be interpreted as Scotland paying homage to England. At St Giles Cathedral in Edinburgh, on June 24, 1953, Elizabeth accepted the Scottish Crown jewels at the National Service of Thanksgiving. She then returned the crown to the Duke of Hamilton. It was the Duke of Hamilton's ancestor, who the people trusted with keeping Scotland free from the Union in 1706. He didn't turn up for the vote, pleading toothache. It was later discovered that he was up to his neck in debt and was probably bribed to let the Union go through. The childless Queen Anne, she had lost nine children, was desperate for the Union in order to control the Scottish Parliament. She feared they would accept a Catholic Stuart King on her death. She wanted the German and Protestant House of Hanover, from which the new King Charles is descended, to succeed. Labour ensured Scots would be denied the right to decide their own future by introducing the Scotland Act in 1998. Westminster is doing just that right now, by refusing a Section 30 order. As there is no mention in the media of a ceremony in Scotland, it would seem that our proud nation is also to be denied the dignity of crowning its own monarch. Yours etc. Annie Harrower Grey, address supplied. Now that the dictatorship is over, Sir, now that the dictatorship is at an end, hopefully the next First Minister will take a more pragmatic view of governing the country. Can we hope to see an SNP administration that will abandon the tunnel vision approach and try getting things moving again in the right direction? 
Could they possibly have democracy within their own party instead of elected? And a few non-elected representatives dancing to the tune of one voice? Will available funding now be directed towards our local authorities and the sums required for properly running and maintaining local services? Will our NHS, roads, education, islands, care services and many other long neglected duties of a government receive some TLC from a new leader and maybe a new cabinet as well? Somehow I doubt it all, but it's nice to dream. A malignant ailment is best cured by removing it completely, not just one part. Yours, etc. Ian Ballock by email. Fair ye well. Sir, we have another prime example to add to the overflowing list of instances where nationalist leaders in Scotland show not the slightest sense of self awareness or sense of irony. When Boris Johnson left office, and was replaced as PM by a vote of Tory party members, there was a great wailing and gnashing of teeth from the SNP. This was an outrage. Scotland's First Minister went as far to say that, that having a general election was a democratic imperative. But now she's gone and has been replaced in exactly the same manner as Johnson, not a word of protest is heard. I would make the point that this is strange, but no. It is exactly what the SNP always have done, and what any fair obs- observer would expect them to do. Yours, etc. Alexander Mackay by email. Reader's Charter. This newspaper is built in a tradition of accuracy and fairness, giving you the information you need to understand our world, holding power to account and exposing injustice. Our trusted brand means we're the only place where you can read and participate in honest debates. We are committed to giving a voice to those who struggle to be heard as well as those whose profession is crafting an argument. Our Reader's Charter spells out our commitment to you. You can read the Charter online at kirkyherald at sign jnscotland.co.uk Shaping Changes in Scotland's Land Use A new paper launched by Scotland's leading land reform body hopes to stimulate discussion on the ways communities can benefit from land use change and investment for net zero. The Scottish Land Commission's discussion paper, Community Benefits from Investment in Natural Capital, not only considers how local communities can benefit from changes in Scotland's land, but showcases how investment in natural capital enhancement, restoration and creation products, projects, can deliver public, private and community benefits. The paper draws together the Commission's current thinking on some of the key questions about community benefits and highlights the need for major investment in Scotland's land to fulfil these on a local level while meeting climate demands. It is estimated that £15 billion to £27 billion of investment is required in Scotland to reach net zero by 2045. The discussion paper has been released with a series of case studies showcasing examples of existing land ownership, use and management where investment has been crucial in transforming land to act in the interest of local communities. Hamish Trench, the Commission's Chief Executive, said, With Scotland attracting significant investment in natural capital, it is important to ensure practical ways in which communities benefit. This discussion paper is intended to help shape practice that delivers on the principles the Scottish Government has set out for responsible investment. Community benefits should be a key consideration for landowners, investors and project developers. While there are many ways this can be approached, the paper proposes some basic principles. Packages should deliver maximum value to local communities on a negotiated basis for long-term use. One of six supporting case studies demonstrates that land managed with the community benefit can provide key financial return for surrounding communities. Trees for Life, which owns and manages Dundregan Estate in Glenmoriston, underwent a series of environmental project, projects, one of which saw the planting of a native woodland and the carbon units generated then sold to corporate buyers for offsetting. The money raised was invested back into local community initiatives and groups. Hamish added, this is just one example where communities have seen tangible benefits unlocked from the land around them. 
Scotland's land plays a pivotal role in our everyday lives. It is essential that communities are able to influence and benefit from natural capital projects, land decisions and land use. We hope this paper will stimulate the discussion on practical ways to help ensure that Scotland is maximising its land opportunities. The Scottish Land Commission provides advice and recommendations for reforms to law and policy, as well as leadership for change in culture and practice. The discussion paper can be found at www.landcommission.gov.scot forward slash our dash work forward slash good dash practice forward slash community dash benefit. That's www.landcommission.gov.scot forward slash our dash work forward slash good dash practice forward slash community dash benefit. Responses are welcome and should be sent to good practice at landcommission.gov.scot. That's good practice at landcommission.gov.scot before March the 20th. Parents can claim childcare support. More than 405,000 families saved on childcare costs in December thanks to tax-free childcare. And HM Revenue and Customs, HMRC, is urging those yet to sign up not to miss out. The latest figures show £41.5 million in government top-up payments were made to working families across the UK in December 2022, and an increase of more than 77,500 families using the scheme compared to December 2021. Each family saved up to £2,000 a year per child, or £4,000 if their child is disabled. Tax-free childcare is a financial support for working families with children up to the age of 11 or 16 if their child has a disability. The government can top the government <laughs> the government top up can be used to pay for any approved childcare including holiday clubs, breakfast and other after school clubs, childminders and nurseries. Families who have not yet signed up can check their eligibility and apply at www.gov.uk forward slash apply dash for dash tax dash free dash child dash care. That's www.gov.uk forward slash apply dash for dash tax dash free dash child dash care. Opening a tax free childcare account is quick and easy and can be done at any time of the year. Myrtle Lloyd, HMRC's Customer Services Director General said, We want to help families get the most out of their finances and tax-free childcare can help pay towards their childcare costs. For every £8 paid into the account, families automatically receive an additional £2. Families can save up to £500 every three months, £2,000 a year, for each child or £1,000, £4,000 a year if their child is disabled. More than 1 million families in the UK are entitled to some form of government childcare support. To find out more, visit www.childcarechoices.gov.uk That's www.childcarechoices.gov.uk New grants for people with dementia. Age Scotland and About Dementia have announced a new funding opportunity for people affected by dementia in Scotland. The peer-to-peer grants programme will allow people living with dementia and current or former impaired carers to apply for grants of between £500 and £10,000, with £260,000 available in total. The grants are designed to empower people with dementia and unpaid carers to create their own peer support activities and projects. These could be resources, community groups, research, pilot projects, or creative activities. These grants can also be used to enable ordinary activities that improve the quality of everyday life for people living with dementia and unpaid carers. The fund has been delivered by About Dementia and Age Scotland as part of their Life Changes Trust legacy work. The programme is open-ended, with no deadline for applications, 
and grants will be available until March 2025 or until funds are exhausted. All applications are assessed by the About Dementia Grants and Learning Coordinators alongside a panel of people living with dementia. Kain Manji, Head of Dementia at Age Scotland, said, This fund is truly peer-to-peer, with funding only available to and accessed by those with lived experience of dementia. Who better to know what will make a difference than those who have been there? We're excited to be launching this fund for people living with dementia and unpaid carers and are very much looking forward to receiving applications. For further information on the fund, requirements and how to apply, visit age.scot slash about dementia slash peer to peer. Take your trade to the 2023 RHS. Report by Julie Curry. Scotland's largest event, the Royal Highland Show, is calling for new retail exhibitors to apply for a trade stand at the 2023 event from June 22nd to 25th. More than 200,000 visitors are expected at this year's event, following a capacity increase, with a new buyers event also planned to get traders in front of hard-to-reach industry buyers. As Scotland's largest outdoor event, the show is a unique chance for businesses to network with a wild cross-section of visitors. New for 2023 is the buyers event, which will see food, drink and homeware businesses showcase their wares to an audience of well-known brands, providing an unrivaled chance to present products in person to otherwise hard-to-reach key contacts in the sector. Another exciting addition to this year's show is the Golden Shears World Sheep Shearing and Wood Handling Championship, attracting competitors from over 30 countries and providing even greater retail opportunities. Over 800 businesses traded in 2022, selling everything from agricultural machinery and clothing to motor vehicles and food and drink. In particular, traders in the food and drink and lifestyle sector are being encouraged to apply this year. A recent economic impact report highlighted that the Royal Highland Show contributes £39.5 million to Edinburgh's economy, more than the city's Hogmanay celebrations, with visitors spending £147 each, on average, on everything from agricultural equipment to food and drink. Jim Warnock, RHASS chairman, said, Our traders are a key factor in making the Royal Highland Show what it is, an iconic event showcasing the very best of Scotland's food, farming and rural life. With an average spend of around £150 per visitor, the retail opportunities for businesses are significant, not to mention the potential for networking with other traders and suppliers. Plus, with our new buyers event extending the commercial opportunities for the exhibitors, this show is certainly one not to be missed. Applications for traders are now open at www.royalhighlandshow.org slash trade until March the 31st. Any queries can be emailed to tradestands at rhass.org.uk. New Creative Lottery Funds Launched Creative Scotland has launched two new funds supported by the National Lottery. Both funds are designed for organisations which are not currently in receipt of regular funding. The refreshed National Lottery Open Fund for organisations offers between £1,000 and £100,000 for projects or programmes of activity lasting up to 18 months. Applications can be made any time with no deadlines. The National Lottery Extended Programme Fund offers between £100,000 and £200,000 for programmes of creative activity lasting between 18 and 24 months. Applications can be made at any time, right up until the deadline for the fund in November this year. Ian Munro, Creative Scotland CEO, said, It's thanks to National Lottery players that we can launch these funds. To apply, visit www.creativescotland.com District News, Churches Email kirkyherald at gnscotland.co.uk Kirkintilloch St David's Memorial Park Church At St David's Memorial Park Church, our Sunday morning service on February the 26th will be at 10.30am. All are welcome to attend our service. During the service, school-aged children will have the opportunity to go through to our halls with the leaders of JAM 
for their own time of fun and learning. Our Tuesday lunchtime service will be held each Tuesday from noon in our small hall. Our next service will be February the 28th. All are welcome to attend this afternoon service. On the same evening, our guild will meet in the hall from 7.30pm to 9.30pm. Again, you are warmly invited to come along to the church. The topic will be Home for Good, Finding Homes for Vulnerable Children. The church has, a com- has commenced with a warm space event. This will continue on Mondays in 2023. The church will be open from noon to 4pm. All are welcome to come along. Volunteers are needed to support this event. If you can offer some time and support, please contact the church through the Facebook page. Our next Saturday at SDMP will be on March the 25th from 10am till noon. This is a free event for all primary age children where they will be involved in arts and crafts. Please see detail on our Facebook page for contact details and how to register for this event. On Saturday, March the 4th, from 2pm to 5pm, the Glasgow Society of Organists will be performing in the church sanctuary with teas and coffees to follow. This is a free event, all welcome. St James Church, Hilton Road, Bishop Briggs. Rector Reverend Canon Paul Watson, 0141 230 4080. There is a communion service in the chapel on Thursday, February the 23rd at 11am and on Sunday, February the 26th at 9am. The 10.30am communion service with hymns on Sunday is in the church, face masks are personal choice. Everyone is welcome to come along to any of these services. Do stay on for tea and coffee and fellowship afterwards. There are also other virtual services and groups. For up to date and further information, Refer to our social media, Facebook, St James LS Bishop Briggs website, www.stjamesbishopbriggs.org.uk Lindsay Old Parish Church Sunday worship begins in the church at 11am. There is a Sunday school for children aged 3 years to primary 7 and focus for secondary pupils. A creche is available for children under 3. There will be a quiz evening on Friday. March the 10th at 7.30pm. This will be presented by Anne and Richard Bell. Tickets are £5 per person and a light supper will be served. Teams are invited with a maximum of four people. Springfield Cambridge Church. Morning worship on Sunday, February the 26th will be led by Reverend Dean Taylor and Mrs Julie Harty in the sanctuary at 11am. The Sunday school meets in room 2. There is also a creche facility where we will be happy to look after your child, birth to three years, in room two. Morning worship has also been live streamed on the Springfield Cambridge Church YouTube channel. A link to this can be found on the Springfield Cambridge Church website, www.springfieldcambridge.org.uk and Facebook page, where up-to-date information about events and church organisations can also be found. Tea and coffee will be available after church in room one. Come and enjoy the fellowship. There will be a vestry hour on Wednesday, February the 22nd from 10am to 11am for anyone wishing to talk with the minister. There will be a short weekly service of worship in the Springfield Chapel on Wednesday, February the 22nd from 11.10am to 11.30am after which tea and coffee will be available in the Hall of Fellowship. Tickets for the Guild Hostess Tea on Monday, March the 13th are now available from committee members Price £5. Lindsay Union Parish Church. Sunday worship on February the 26th is at 11am, read by Reverend Dan Carmichael. There is tea and coffee in the new hall after the service. Young people are also welcome to Lighthouse and Bible class. A live stream of the service is available on YouTube via our website. The Meeting Place Coffee Shop is open on Wednesdays, 10am to noon in the new hall. Meet your friends and enjoy a chat over a cup of tea or coffee. Everyone, from the very young to the young at heart, is welcome to attend. We also have a good selection of greetings cards and second-hand books for sale. The drop-in youth cafe on Thursdays at 3.45pm until 5pm is a place where young people can hang out, relax and have a good time after a long day at school. Each week there is a free snack, with lots of different things to do, such as games consoles, 
table tennis, arts and crafts, board games and more. The coffee pot is open on Fridays 10am till noon in the new hall for teas, coffee and chat. Art for Seniors is on Monday, February the 27th, 1.30pm in the new hall. Enjoy creating a piece of art under the step-by-step guidance of art- artist Beverly McCluskey. No experience needed. Contact Margaret on 07792 168 826 to book your place. Kemure Parish Church. We look forward to Margaret Russell and Fiona Young leading our Sunday worship at 11am. The service will be live streamed as usual on YouTube and can be found by searching for Kemure Bishop Briggs. This Monday afternoon at 2pm, the Guild speaker will be Elaine Devlin on Poems and Memories of Old Glasgow. Our warm welcome hub is open on Fridays from noon to 3pm, providing a warm, safe place with free hot soup, coffee, tea, etc. to all who might enjoy some fellowship each week. This is open to all, not just members of the congregation. Details of all groups currently running. Visit our, vill- our website, kemure-church.co.uk To find us on Facebook, just search for Kemure Parish Church. If you would like to join our WhatsApp group, or receive the Bible studies from ABC, then email us at kemurechurch at icloud.com. Colston Well Park Church, your church. You're welcome to Colston Well Park this Sunday at 11am, read by Reverend Leslie Grieve. Tea and coffee served in the church hall after the service. The Colston Art Club continues this Monday at 10am to 1pm, and all budding, enthusiastic artists are welcome to join our ranks. For more information, 07709-584-680. This Wednesday from 11am to 12.30pm, Cake and Company contributes for those who need a bit of company and some friendly chat. The food bank continues its good work within the community and is open every Friday from 11am to 1pm and 2pm to 4pm. Again, a special thanks to all who continually donate and give of their time. Follow Colston's church services on Facebook at sign Colston Well Well Park Parish Church and if you require more information on any of our church activities contact Leslie Grieve on 07813 255 052 Home Church, Scotland Lammermoor Road, Kirkintillock G66 2AB Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord One Church, Four Locations Kirkintillock Glasgow, Stornoway and online. A church for all ages. Saturdays, warm space, warm welcome. A meal at 6.30pm. All welcome. Encounter weekend, February the 24th to 26th. Sunday, February the 26th, 9.30am. Communion, 10am. Prayer meeting followed by refreshments. 11am. Worship service, including communion. Children's church, and creche, followed by refreshments. Warm space, warm welcome at home church every Saturday at 6.30pm. Tuesdays, engine room, prayer and teaching from 9.30am to 10.30am. Homes group for prayer and Bible study, Tuesday at 7.15pm or Wednesday at 7.15pm. Fridays, youth fellowship at 7.30pm. See Facebook and Instagram for more information. St Mary's Parish Church. The service on Sunday, February the 26th will begin at 11am as usual and will be taken by the Reverend Dr Ruth Morrison. During this service, communion will take place. The young church will meet in our church halls for age-appropriate activities. After the service, the annual pancake lunch will take place. Both savoury and sweet pancakes will be available. If you have not been able to indicate your wish to attend, Please ring the church office before midday on Friday, February the 24th, 0141-775-1166. Wednesday welcome will take place on Wednesday, February the 22nd, when hot drinks and home baking will be available from 10 to 11.30am. This will be followed by a short service. Cadar Parish Church We look forward to welcoming you this coming Sunday to our service which is at 10.30am in Cadar Parish Church. The service will be led by Reverend John McGregor, Rona Gold and Josie Javier Usendo Mallow 
MMUS, children, Cadder kids, meeting the church prior to the service, and then go up to the Cadder North Hall for their activities. Tea and coffee served after the service. Food bank. If you wish to donate to the local food bank, you can bring your donations of food to the church or the coffee shop. Early fellowship meets in the South Hall Chapel at 9.30am on Thursday for half an hour with Reverend John McGregor and also available on Tuesday and Thursdays for Zoom. For further details, contact the minister. Guild. Kim Muir, Cadden and Springfield Cambridge Guilds are having a joint meeting in Springfield Cambridge Church on Monday, February the 27th at 7pm. Please note time and bring your own cup. The speaker is Karen Gillen, the Church Secretary of the Church of Scotland Guilds. Cadder AGM is on Thursday, March the 2nd. We are deviating from the usual and starting this meeting with a fish and chip supper at 6.30pm. Please bring your own knife and fork and cup. The meeting itself will start at 7.30pm. World Day of Praise on Friday, March the 3rd in Springfield Cambridge Church at 11am. This year's service has been made up by the women of Taiwan. Fresh Start Charity are holding a coffee morning on Saturday, March the 11th in Cadar South Halls from 10am till noon. Tickets £4. Donations of baking or items for the Tombola stall would be most welcome. Caring for Creation Team are getting underway with our 2023 programme. They invite everyone concerned about climate change and interested in learning more and learning ways to help make a difference to our first open meeting since the beginning of COVID restrictions. The meeting is scheduled for Thursday, February the 23rd at 7pm in Cador South Halls. Among hopefully a lively discussion, we will learn about the contribution made to combating and monitoring climate change by bogs and brat bats. Everyone welcome. Tea and coffee and fellowship included. We invite you all to join the battle to provide a better life for gen- for children, grandchildren and future generations. The coffee shop at Carter South Hall is open on Tuesday to Thursdays, 10am to 2pm and Friday 10am to noon. The next film night is on Friday, March the 17th in the North Hall at 7.30pm. The movie is Fisherman's Friends 2, follow up of the first one we saw last year. Tickets priced £5 are available for members of the Fellowship team. Girls Brigade, Tuesday Explorers P1 to P3, 6.15pm to 7.30pm. Juniors P4 to P7, 6.30pm to 8pm. Brigaders S1 to S6, 7.30pm to 9pm. Boys Brigade, Anchor Boys, Monday 6 to 7pm. Junior Section, Monday 7.30 to 8.30pm. Company and Senior Section, Friday 7-9pm. Milton of Campsie Church. Time to pray is at 7.15pm on Wednesday and at 7.30pm the Fellowship will hear a talk by William Keane on Orkney and Shetland. BB Anchor and Junior Sections at 6.15pm on Friday. Thanks to all who sent in pictures of special places. For next Sunday, send us a picture of yourself holding some kind of irresistible treat. A safeguarding introductory course will be held in the church from 1pm to 3.30pm. It's also the day for bringing donations for the food bank. Warm Spaces Hub is on Monday at 1pm. To volunteer and or for more information, contact Anne Pert, annepert56 at gmail.com or 01360-313-003. Also on Mondays, Baby and Toddler Group at 9.15am. Hobbies Club at 2pm, Badminton Club at 7.30pm. The next Go Mad Extra, Lionissimo, is Sunday, March the 5th from 1 to 3pm. Please publicise. On that day, we'll be visited by the very Reverend Dr Ian Greenshields, moderator of the General Assembly of the Church of Scotland. Using Christian Aid envelopes, we are supporting the DEC appeal for Turkey and Syria. Please give generously. So far, £866 has been given. District News, General Wednesday the 22nd of February 2023 Poppy needs a loving home. Poppy is a 14-year-old Labrador cross. Poppy is very friendly and adores human affection, making her a perfect addition to the household of new owners. She loves nothing more than chasing and fetching her ball or toys and is always up for some fun with her family. 
She also enjoys going for a drive and is happy to jump in the car. Poppy likes to potter in the garden and will happily find a spot in the sunshine. Poppy is happy to meet dogs on her walks but would like to be the only pet in the home. She can live with children over 14 years old, is house trained and happy to be left alone for a couple of hours. If you could provide a home for Poppy, call the West Calder Rehoming Centre on 01506 873 459. Westminster View Brexit Mistake Fixed by Independence by Amy Callahan MP Brexit was a colossal mistake. In the three years since the UK left the EU, we have lost rights, gained bureaucracy and lost a, m- lost a lot of money. Even many people who voted for Brexit now agree. A recent partnership, where over 71% of us voted to remain, a recent survey found that local pro-European feeling had increased even further. A staggering 76% of locals now believe Brexit was a mistake when we don't know those are removed. That puts us as the 11th most pro-EU constituency out of 632 across the UK. The increase in pro-EU sentiment should be of no surprise given the impact of Brexit on our daily lives. Rising food prices, at times even empty supermarket shelves and the spiralling cost of living. Due to Brexit, The UK is the only major world economy that has failed to return its pre-COVID growth performance. According to the Office for Budget Responsibility, Brexit has reduced UK GDP by 4%, double the impact of COVID. That time amounts to around £40 billion in lost revenue to the Treasury every single year, money that could pay for the entire Scottish NHS budget three times over. And it's not just lost revenue, it's all the extra bureaucracy facing businesses. Bureaucracy we were promised would be minimal. Then there is the impact on students. They can no longer taste taste life abroad through the Erasmus scheme. Their horizons have been limited. And that's before we even mention the return of roaming charges. Most people across the UK now see what we see in Scotland from the start. That Brexit would be, and is, a mistake. One that should be rectified. But we have a Conservative Party unwilling to recognise the error of their ways a Labour leader unwilling to risk the chance of retaking the Red Wall seats, and the Lib Dems who talk about a closer relationship with the EU but do not offer the obvious answer, rejoin. Instead, the Liberal Democrats have a plan to rebuild trade with Europe as if trade was the only issue created by Brexit. The SNP is the only party that seeks to rejoin the EU. The Lib Dems, the party that in 2019 wanted to stop Brexit, now seem to think the dire straits we're in is workable. That's why it is clear that the only way to undo the mistakes of Brexit is with the powers of independence, by voting for and believing in an independent Scotland in Europe. Harriers under 13 boys win gold in Relay. An article by Brian Yule and read by me, Corey. Springburn Harriers struck gold in the under 13 boys four times 200 metres at the Scottish National Indoor Relay Championships held at the Emirates Arena in Glasgow. The team of Matthew Murray, Lucas MacDonald, Andrew Dawson and Wee Shun Tong, who are all aged 12, broke the club record with a time of 1.56.28 during the qualifying event last month. They will go even quicker in the final, as Murray ran first before handing to MacDonald, then Dawson, with Tong running the final leg to cross the line in 1.55.46, which, as well as breaking their own club record, was the fifth fastest time for Scottish under-13 boys. Petrivi would follow them home in second, with Griffnock North in third. Although they didn't reach the finals, the under-17 female A-team also broke the club record, with a time of 1.58.22 at the qualifying event. The club also enjoyed success at the Scottish Schools Championships earlier this month. Charis Crawford took gold in the under-17 pole vault with a new personal best of 2 metres 90 centimetres, just ahead of clubmate Robin Lumby, who claimed silver with his own personal best of 2.5 metres. 
Douglas Knox won two gold medals at under 15 level, with the first coming in a personal best time of 7.68 in the 600 metres, followed by another in the long jump with a distance of 5.84 metres, just 6 centimetres short of his personal best. Ailey McAlman broke the club under 17 record for the 200 metre in a time with a personal best of 28.23, while in the under-15, shot Jamie Lowry through a new PB of 8.9 metres. This year marks some major milestones for Harriers, as it is 130 years since the club was formed, the club. While the famous Jack Crawford 10k race is celebrating 35 years. To sign up for this historic annual race along the 4th and Clyde Canal, visit www.springburnharriers.co.uk forward slash jack hyphen crawford hyphen 10k, which is 10 and then k, hyphen 2023. Harriers meet from 6 till 8pm on Tuesdays to Thursdays at Hunters Hill Hub in Bishopbriggs and anyone interested in athletics is welcome to go along. That article was written by Brian Newell and read by me, Corey. More opportunities for girls to kick off. An article by Brian Newell and read by me, Corey. A brand new national football programme has been launched which aims to encourage primary school aged girls to participate in the sport. The KDM Group Soccer Centres will provide a fun and friendly environment where the stars of the future can access the game, develop their skills and meet new friends whilst improving their fitness. The previous iteration of the Soccer Centres programme that ran between 2018 and 2020 was hugely popular, with 82 centres and more than 3,000 participants. With a record number of girls and women currently playing football in Scotland, with more than 21,000 registered players across the country, the new KDM Group Soccer Centres programme will further bolster the continued growth of the game. SFA Club Development Officer Sam Milne said, We've recently launched our Football for All grassroots strategy, and these centres are part of helping to implement that and offer more girls the chance to get involved. This really is a fantastic programme that will help supplement the continued growth of the game, as well as supporting our ambition to keep providing as many playing opportunities as possible. When looking at affordable access for football, rising costs are happening, so the investment is huge because it allows us to book and coaches and allows our community hubs not to have to pick up the cost. So, investment like this really does drive the game, and drives participation by taking away some of the barriers that might stop girls from playing. Each region will have a dedicated ambassador for its KDM Group Soccer Centres, from the women's national team. For the central region, which covers Clackmananshire, Eastern Bartonshire, Falkirk, North Lanarkshire, Stirling and Western Bartonshire, this will be Scotland number one, Lee Gibson. She said, It's amazing to see how far the game has grown, and is continuing to grow. I remember in 2018 going back to where I started, playing football, and there was a soccer centre there, so it's an amazing programme and I'm really proud to be a part of it. Looking at how many young girls are playing football is just amazing and all we want to do is try and inspire them. It is continually growing in Scotland, with the numbers at a record high, and long may that continue. KDM Group Executive Director Mark Jones added, Realistically, this is about young girls having the opportunity to get involved. We want to help provide the platform for them to learn about football and enjoy the game. The profile of women's football is getting bigger every day, and young girls deserve the opportunity and environment to show how good they can be. By investing in the soccer centres, 
We hope we can do our bit to help the development of the women's game. For more information, visit www.scottishfa.co.uk forward slash football hyphen development forward slash participation forward slash girls hyphen women's hyphen football forward slash kdm hyphen group hyphen soccer hyphen centres forward slash central hyphen region. That article was written by Brian Newell and read by me, Corey. A record number aim to be Warriors. A record number of schools are giving competitive rugby a try at Scotston Stadium in the 2023 SP Energy Network's Warriors Championship. Around 1,200 young people from 29 schools are aiming to emulate Scotland's recent success over the next eight weeks with the final taking place at the home of Glasgow Warriors in May. More than 4,000 young people have participated in the programme since it was first established in 2015. Taking part this year are Anan High, Balfron High, Belmont Academy, Bigger High, Melbourne Academy, Coatbridge High, Dalziel High, Eastwood High, Falkirk High, Grange Academy, Jordan Hill School, Kyle Academy, Largs Academy, Lindsay Academy, Loch Aber High, Loch Gilphead High, Lockerbie Academy, Mar College, Moffat Academy, Montrose Academy, Northwest Community Campus, Oban High, Robert Burns Academy, Shawlands Academy, St Paul's High, St Thomas Aquinas Secondary, Stonelaw High, Wallace High and Wellington School. Vicky Kelsall, CEO at SP Energy Networks, said Innovatives like this promote healthy and active lives, teamwork, leadership, positive mental health and communication, while having fun and making friends. It's so great to be part of that and also showcase the green career and development opportunities we can offer. So it's a real win-win. Warriors Managing Director Al Kellogg added, There will be many young people who get to experience rugby for the first time. Our hope is this opportunity and experience will be a positive one, and encourage them to continue their rugby journey. Late drama as Peters Hill claim the three points. There was late drama on Saturday as Peters Hill beat Arthurley 2-1 to move to within a point of safety in the WOS Premier Division. Ryan McGregor must have thought he had won it for the visitors three minutes from time, but Jordan Marshall equalised in the 91st minute, and then, two minutes later, Jay McKay grabbed the winner. Rob Roy put another point on the board as they seek to avoid a regulation scrap as Guy's Meadow passed a pitch inspection prior to the 0-0 draw at Auchinleck Talbot. Rob Roy host Hurlford United on Saturday, while Peter Hill are at Largs Thistle. Rossville trip to Thorningwood United in the first division was called off due to a waterlogged pitch and are waiting Nielsen in the WOS League Cup on Saturday. Ashfield missed the chance to go top of the second division with a 3-2 defeat at home to leaders Renfrew. The hosts twice led through Fraser Sheridan and Johnny Black, only to get pegged back through an OG and Kieran Diver strike before Scott Morton scored the winner. This allowed Glasgow Persher to move into second place as they won 3-2 at home to South Rangers. Paul Smith gave Colsyth a 1-0 lead at half-time, but Persher fought back as Bobakar Musa grabbed a double and Linus Rewadza found the net before Chris Ketterer put one back. Persher are away to Joker Athletic on Saturday, while Ashfield travelled to Glasgow United. Westport United won 2-1 at home to Thorn Athletic in the 4th Division. 
Ewan Roger gave the away side the lead, but West Park won it in the second half with goals from Eddie Ferns and Stefan Graham. Rossville Academy weren't in action and they host West Park on Saturday. Rossville closed the gap in the SWF Championship with a 3-2 win at home to Hutchison Vale, while leaders Livingston drew with Morton. The Rossville goals all came in the first half through Louise McCobbs, Lauren McCulloch and Fiona Cully. West Park United beat Clyde Bank 4-3 at home to win their first game in the SWF West. Rossville host Inverness CT on Sunday. West Park head to Dunny Place and Glasgow City return to action in the SWPL1 at Aberdeen. That concludes this week's edition of the Kirkland Hill Herald podcast. Please remember to subscribe to our channels at Tune Review and to tell your friends about our service.